Hi, welcome to the Trig Unit Lesson 3, 45, 45, 90, Special Right Triangles. And you only need to know one side of a special right triangle in order to find all three sides because of these special patterns. So let's learn the special patterns and talk about these. Okay, hopefully you've printed your note-taking guide out. We're looking at the 45-45-90 special right triangle rules. Okay, in a 45-45-90 triangle, the legs are congruent, okay? It's an isosceles triangle. So the legs are congruent. The symbol for congruent is an equal sign with a wavy thing, or you can write in the word congruent there. Congruent, okay? And then two of the angles are 45 degrees each. So they are 45 degrees, or they are also congruent to each other, okay? So an iso we have an isosceles right triangle. So the angles measure 45, 45, and 90 degrees. Now let's use this triangle over here for our patterns. Okay, we're gonna label both of the legs, so these two congruent legs, we're gonna label those X and X. Okay, and we're going to label the hypotenuse with this rule, and this rule is always true. It's going to be x times the square root of 2. Okay, so it's square root of 2 times x, and I'm actually going to write it as x square root 2, because that's how generally you write it, the coefficient in front of the radical. But for your little note-taking guide, you're going to take the square root of 2 times whatever value x is. And that's the rule, and that will always work. So if you know one leg, you label the other leg, and then you can label the hypotenuse by just multiplying it by the square root of two. Now think about this. If you're given the hypotenuse, since you multiplied by the square root of two to, to get go from the leg to the hypotenuse, if you've got the hypotenuse, you're gonna work backwards and you're gonna divide by the square root of two to work it backwards. So let's look at the pattern given different information. So let's look first at the pattern down there. What if you're given a leg, okay? If your leg is five, what can you do? Well, given the leg, we're gonna label it X. So we know the other leg has to be also, has to be five. And then we're gonna label the um, hypotenuse X square root two. So we're gonna, since X is five, we're just gonna plug a five in here and take five times the square root of two. So that's simply how you find the hypotenuse given one of the legs. Label the, both the legs the same and then multiply it by the square root of two. Okay, what if you're given the hypotenuse? Okay, so let's look at the second scenario. Let me draw this up. So you have 18 square root two here. And that's your hypotenuse. You're gonna label this side x this side x, and the hypotenuse is x square root two. So you're gonna take 18 square root two, and you're gonna set it equal to x square root two. Well, to get the x by itself, you're gonna divide both sides by the square root of two. So you're left with, ah, x is 18. Whoops, 18 equals x. So that means each of the legs is 18. So given the hypotenuse, you're gonna divide by the square root of two to get the leg. But given the leg, you would multiply by the square root of two to get the hypotenuse. So those are the patterns. So on here, it says label the hypotenuse x square root three, then solve for x by dividing both sides by the square root of two. Okay, so there's how to solve going forward and backwards. Okay. So now let's look at a couple practice problems here. Or uh, let's take your turn, okay? I'm actually gonna work a couple of these with you, these odd ones, just to give you a chance to kind of practice going forward and backwards, and then you can check the even ones. So let's try one, three, and five. Okay, so we have number one, we have a leg that is 14, okay? That means this other leg, x, we know is the same value, so it would also be 14. Then y up here, remember y is x root two, so we're just gonna plug in square root, or 14 
so we're going to get 14 square roots of 2. So that one was a forward problem, labeling both legs and just multiplying by the square root of 2 to get the hypotenuse. Okay, so let's look at number 3, because you're going to work number 2. Okay, this time we're, we're given a leg, but the leg is a little bit different. It's 5 square root 2. We don't know this other leg A. We don't know the B yet. B is the hypotenuse, right? Because it's opposite the right angle. Okay, so since these legs are the same, what do you think A is going to be? A is also going to be 5 square root 2. Now to find B or the hypotenuse, we're going to take, remember the formula is x square root 2, so we're going to take this value x, which is 5 square root 2, and we're going to plug it in right there. So 5 square root 2 is x, then times the square root of 2. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4. So 5 square root 4, and the square root of 4 is 2, so 5 times 2 is 10. So that means the hypotenuse on this one is 10. Okay? Now, um, let's jump to one that you're given the hypotenuse. Okay, let's try number 2. Sorry, I'm jumping around a little bit here, but you can handle it. Let's see. This one we have 3 square root 2, and here's our right angle, and we're looking for A and B. Okay, so this is number 2. Now this one, we're going to label the given part as x square root uh, 2, because that's the formula for the hypotenuse. Then you're just going to solve for x, because each of these legs is equal to x. So divide by the square root of 2, divide by the square root of 2, and so x is 3. So we know each of these legs is simply just 3, and that makes sense. If this is 3 and this is 3, then you would multiply by the square root of 2 to get the hypotenuse, which was given as 3 root 2. Okay, why don't we try number 6. Number 6, we have, I didn't do the odds, I lied to you. I'm just doing some, some of these to give you different practice feedback. Okay, this time, what are we given? Oops, that's not the prettiest triangle, but you get it. Okay, we're given the hypotenuse, and what are we going to label the hypotenuse? We're going to label it x root 2, and each of the legs is x. So since 12 is equal to x root 2, to solve for x, we have to do what? Divide by the square root of 2. Okay, so this is one of those rationalizing. We're going to have to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 2. So that's the square root of 4, which is 2. I hope you're getting comfortable with that. When you multiply radical times itself, you get the square root of 4, which is 2. And 12 square root 2 on top. You can't multiply those. One's in and one's out. But we can simplify this, the 2 and the 12, right? That reduces to a 6 square root 2. So that means that's equal to x. Well, what else is equal to x? The two legs are. So that means each leg, a and b, are both 6 square roots of 2. So that gives you some practice. You're going to have to try number 4 and number 5, which are little involved, multiplying and working with radicals. So just check those answers. Okay, so on the next page, on the third page of your note-taking guide, you have got uh, square with a diagonal drawn and we're going to try to find the area of the square but this time instead of being given the side that you just square to find the area I'm going to give you the diagonal so let's look at this scenario with the diagonal okay here's your diagonal and I'm going to give that to you as 8 Let's say your diagonal is 8, and you need to find the area of the square. Well, to find the area of the square, you need to know the side, don't you? And here's our side over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this triangle outside, and obviously it's not to scale, 
but we know that this is 8 and we have a 